for persons residing outside of St. Catherine. Please advise us if you see persons turning up in your communities that you may have concerns about. Help the security forces as they cauterize crime and violence in St. Catherine through a state of public emergency. Share what you know by calling 811-119-311 or 876-837-8888. Let's reclaim our Jamaica from the grips of gangs, guns, and dons. Let's reimagine a Jamaica where peace, prosperity, and progress reign. Let's make that commitment today to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, do business, and of course, retire in paradise. Today, I'm Stephen McHugh, and this is your JIS News for Monday, June 20, 2022. Government has launched a multi-million dollar project to reduce the presence and uses of small arms and light weapons in two communities. The Reduced Small Arms and Light Weapons in Jamaica project was launched at the Jamaica Evangelistic Center in Norwood Heights, St. James, on Friday by National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang. It will be implemented over a 12-month period in Norwood, St. James, and Denham Town in Kingston. It aims to dismantle the factors that make it possible for the illicit trafficking of firearms and ammunition into the country, while also addressing the root cause of violence. The proliferation of firearms resulting in increased access in Jamaica is a direct catalyst for murders. Some 80, over 85 percent of our homicides are committed with a firearm. And we don't in any way take pride in it. Jamaica has the highest rate of homicides of any democracy in the world. The intervention is being spearheaded by the Ministry of National Security and implemented by the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, at a cost of $74.6 million. Financing is from the salient fund established by the UNDP and the United Nations Organization for Disarmament Affairs. UNESCO and the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime are also a part of the project. The Reduced Small Arms and Light Weapons in Jamaica project will incorporate four key activities to achieve its objectives. These include a desk review and situational analysis of Jamaica's current needs and constraints in relation to crime and small arms control, as well as virtual high-level consultations and bilateral meetings with key stakeholders on issues of citizen security and safety in Jamaica. The other two activities are the development of a mission report with focus areas recommendations for the UN country team and development of the UN joint project document for enhancing citizen safety and security in Jamaica. The National Water Commission, NWC, has improved the distribution of water supply to approximately 1,300 residents of Westgate Hill in St. James and surrounding communities. A 100,000-gallon water storage tank was installed in the area at a cost of $30 million and commissioned into service last Thursday. Residents of Westgate Hill were very appreciative of the infrastructure. We were reduced to one tank that had the capacity of only maintaining our community for half a day if we had a disruption in the water supply. Water is indeed life and the residents of Westgate is, is very thankful that the commissioning of this tank is being done today. Minister with the Responsibility for Water, Senator Matthew Samuda, says this project is among several operating strategies by the NWC to streamline efficiency and mitigate low collection during the drought season. That includes the refurbishing and commissioning of approximately 30 potable water storage tanks across the island at a cost of $575 million. I am pleased to announce to you, ladies and gentlemen, that the 30 tanks are now virtually practically complete. And we will be moving around to commission these tanks for the benefit of these 30 sites. More than 50 vendors are expected to occupy the newly refurbished Clarkstown Market Shops in Trelawney. The project was spearheaded by the Trelawney Municipal Corporation through funding from the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development at a cost of $14 million. The five-shop building includes showers in the rest area, upgraded electrical works, a new roof, and repairs to the meat market and columns. Portfolio Minister Desmond McKenzie is urging the community to protect the infrastructure. And so the 
opening of this market is a clear indication of the commitment of the government. The refurbishing of the shops is part of a multi-phase redevelopment project of the Clarkstown Market and Transportation Center. Phase one of the project included concrete surfacing, the erection of signs, installation of benches, bus sheds, and more to the tune of $6.5 million. Follow-up work was undertaken for another $2.5 million to put in place a security booth and office building, construct a drainage system, and repair the public sanitary facilities. Students at the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts will have the opportunity to access full scholarships and bursaries through the Cecil Cooper Foundation Scholarship. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the announcement at the inaugural Cecil Cooper Foundation Scholarship launch on Friday. He says each year, eligible final year students will have the opportunity to access full scholarships, while four to six first year students will benefit from bursaries. Events like these and efforts such as what we are doing now in launching this foundation and creating the opportunity for young people to get formal exposure to the arts through full scholarships, it's a good start. Exhibitions will be held annually to display the works of students who have been beneficiaries of the scholarships and bursaries provided by the Foundation, as well as works from some of Cecil Cooper's colleagues, former students and other artists. Part proceeds of the funds raised from each annual exhibition will go towards the scholarships and bursaries provided by the Foundation. The Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport is also making a commitment to provide funding for a scholarship in music to one student at the institution. So we will provide the funding for the scholarship in music. And finally, Jamaica will join more than 120 countries in commemorating Tuesday, June 21 as World Music Day under the theme Music at the Intersections. Director and curator of the Jamaica Music Museum, Jam Herbie Miller, says that as part of the observation, media houses are encouraged to play music from different cultures that have impacted Jamaican music. Looking at world music, we get to understand the cross-cultural influences that has allowed us to develop, to develop a very distinctive musical form. It's also important that we listen to the music of the world because we are shaped and our culture informed by different cultures. The Jamaica Music Museum will be hosting an exhibition in August as part of Jamaica's 60th independent celebrations. It will be mounted at the Institute of Jamaica, showcasing the diverse cultures out of which Jamaican popular music emerged. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Digital transformation is the catchphrase on everyone's lips, as Jamaica charts a people-centered course to the digital age. Leading that charge is Minister Without Portfolio in the office of the Prime Minister, Floyd Green. He recently laid out the plans, hear about them in this next feature. Transforming civil registration, integrating social partnerships, investing in communities, and making our roads safer. The office of the Prime Minister is steadfast in its thrust towards a people-centered digital society. Hear more from the Minister with Responsibility for Digital Transformation. craft and create a truly digital society. It has to start with the transformation of our civil registry. The design for the National Identification and Registration Authority, NIRA, has been submitted to Cabinet for approval. Once approved, the NIRA will manage the databases for the National Identification System and Civil Registration. Over at the Registrar General's Department, the RGD, customers can now access even more services online. They include getting an electronic burial order, applying for adoption certificates, and booking weddings. This move complements online application for genealogy research, as well as birth, death, and marriage certificates. 
Persons are also able to update records, correct an error, and input a late entry of name online. We're now moving to procure a new registration software, which for the first time in our history will link birth record to marriage record to deed poll to debt records. Digitization efforts are also taking shape with the signing of a $4 million US dollar contract to digitize over 2 million RGD records. 40 graduates of the Heart NSTA HOPE program have been assigned to the project. And $6 million has been set aside for an ongoing training program targeting RGD staff who will oversee and manage new civil registration technologies. So far, 48 employees have benefited. Digitizing these paper records will yield significant benefits for Jamaicans. People will be able to obtain services at a much quicker rate, minimizing the need to search physical records and enhancing the efficiency of searches. The digital push has made its way to hospitals and birthing centers. Work is underway on a bedside registration app so mothers can leave with verifiable digital and electronic copies of their children's birth certificates. And just in time for Jamaica 60, the RGD will roll out its Operation Birthright Initiative in July. The $50 million program will provide free birth certificates to undocumented Jamaicans who live in households earning less than $37,000 monthly. Members of Parliament will kickstart the program by providing the names of 60 persons in their constituencies who fit the criteria. This is how you lay the foundation for a digital society. Now more than ever, Madam Speaker, we need partnership. This is why we have started the process to revamp the working of the National Partnership Council. With the imminent signing of a new four-year social partnership agreement, focus is being placed on people, planet, partnership, peace and prosperity. Another area of partnership is the National Road Safety Council. Through local, regional and international agencies, a comprehensive program is being hammered out to tackle motorcycle crashes. Training sessions and distribution of helmets are ongoing in the motorcycle crash hotspot areas of Westmoreland and St. Elizabeth. Jamaica will be taking the safe systems approach as a guiding principle in our efforts to reduce the carnage on our roads. 25 of the 487 persons who lost their lives in road crashes in 2021 were children. The Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF, has stepped in with its introduction of the Safe Passage Initiative, which is ongoing in 13 schools. The multi-parish project improves infrastructure and roadways around schools in multiple communities to reduce accidents with our children. Over 7,000 persons will benefit. JSIF is also executing rehabilitation and upgrading projects in rural schools in Portland, St. Catherine and St. Thomas. Over at the Culture, Health, Arts, Sports and Education Chase Fund, learning devices, materials and scholarships are being provided to the education sector. $216 million will be set aside to upgrade and equip infant schools to meet the standards of the Early Childhood Commission. Money has also been set aside to fund the acquisition of equipment for health centers and hospitals. And in the financial year, Chase will complete performing arts centers at the St. Catherine High School and in downtown Kingston. Meanwhile, the Constituency Development Fund, the CDF, is now working with a revised operational procedure that ensures increased statutory and regulatory compliance. I'm pleased to advise that now a minimum of 25% of the Constituency Development Fund is invested in education activities. This amounts to $315 million annually. The fund has also begun the digitization of its documents and procured a software to manage monies it disperses to implementing agencies. The program will be rolled out later this year. We have accelerated the pace of action to get to where we need to be. We are transforming the lives of Jamaicans, making our lives easier and bringing us into a new reality with boundless possibilities. When we think digital, then and only then can we make it happen. What kind of ESL paper this? I'm a bird cipher ticket. You, you what? Bird cipher ticket. <laughs> Hold on. Let me help you. Where are you? I apply for your birth certificate online from the RGD website. 
You're lucky things improve and get easier now. This didn't have any security feature. Are your granny could have write this? Transformation is happening across the public sector. Many services are now available online. We are building a better public service for all. Brought to you by the Transformation Implementation Unit. Have you heard the good news? The Jamaica 60 Festival Song Competition is back on. Yes, interested persons can submit their entries between June 14 and June 21. That's tomorrow, folks. Submit your song to jcdc.gov.jm. And while you do that, we look back at some of the popular festival tunes that keep us rocking to this day. I'm a fan of the I'm a son of the side. I love the sea, I love the sun, the Lord, I love this land. Don't matter where I go, Jamaica is my home. I love the girls, folk, and that's water. As the calendar reaches mid-July, there's usually a buzz of activities showcasing signature festival events leading up to the country's grand independence celebration on August 6. This highly physical, interactive period is a well-anticipated time for both the young and old. Yeah, we love Jamaica Island. But for the past year and a half, things have been different, with the COVID-19 pandemic suspending or forcing events into the virtual realm. Although not the same vibes, our spirits are still high as we look back on all the good times we've had in the past. Go Jamaica, we love you! Festival is a melting pot of cultural activities that has something to the liking of everyone. If fashion is your thing, 2017 was tailored to your taste. have fixture on our independence calendar is mellow go round here the little ones get a chance to show off huge talents them semi smear used to free it that up in big time she paints her wall house red and after she don't put on the red pillowcase and she a huda in on the bed no the dopey Let's keep the excitement going with some reggae dance and clash between two big sound systems. But don't you ride like lightning? Cause man, if you ride like lightning, then you'll crash like thunder. So come on down along the way, now the song a little ways I would play. Ah, with gosh. Cause some are coming down the song to leave the wheels I would be the video Wow, baby! Pop, 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 bogle move! When me say bogle, la the whole a jungle move Man a bogle move, woman a bogle move Pick me bogle, remix the bogle move Bogle move, bogle move The part and name, God bless! So God bless people! Make we pray for one another, man! You ready? You make me stronger You ready? Oh, yeah, everybody, put the way on the get up, put the get up, put the get up, put the get up. You make me stronger. Everybody, we have summer now, we have summer. Gracias, Jesus. Watch me. Everybody, know, we have summer. 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 We have summer.
Yeah, go on, you know. If you know no demon now, nah, right? You get up out of your seat. All who believe in a God, no. Play the one on the fam. All who love Father God, get up out of your seat, no man. I swear shall play. I will not beg no bread. You will be no bread. God is my provider. When they feel like we're going to mash up as a country, we you not. At the end of it all, the biggest excitement is the spectacular performances and fireworks to a full stadium and vibrant crowd. What are we are you full of our roots and culture? <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. Oh, holy, we have to celebrate now. <laughs> they said the people them in them come here, you know. But you see, when our people decide, say the other people them free paper, oh no, them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, Panta, collect you know? medal. I'm on that tongue, we give them in you know? that tongue. The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2000. 2022 organized by the ministry of culture gender entertainment and sport we have more in this report i am on site and planning activities are ablaze persons are advised to download the reggae jamaica app to know what it free what it free <laughs> activities for the jamaica 60 celebration yeah. i don't know the app to get the updates then Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Everald Warmington, recently revealed that plans are far advanced to start construction on the new Houses of Parliament building on lands at Heroes Circle. He says phase one of the procurement of a contractor is advanced, while the procurement tender for works will close on June 28 for evaluation. Catch the genesis of this ambitious plan that is projected to cost the state 50 million U.S. dollars. Our vision is that Kingston must be like what London is to the United Kingdom. We want Kingston to be like what Singapore is to Asia. Kingston should be like what Paris is to France. Kingston must be like what South Africa is to the motherland. We want Kingston, Jamaica to be the epicenter of the Caribbean region. And that vision starts with the construction of a new Houses of Parliament complex, the anchoring structure for the proposed government oval. To be built within the 300 acres of land surrounding the National Heroes Park, the oval will have 14 government ministries, agencies and departments, centrally located to the hub of business and the seventh largest natural harbor in the world. Since the advent of universal adult suffrage in 1944, Jamaicans have had a hand in choosing those who will represent their interests and direct the affairs of the state on their behalf. But long before this important marker in history, Jamaicans have been resolved on the need of a central location from which the affairs of the people are to be administered. Today, Gordon House on Duke Street is that seat of government. This two-story building became the official meeting place of the Jamaican government on Wednesday, October 26, 1960. Like other sites of the past, which were found unsuitable for one reason or another, Gordon House is now poised to make way for the march of progress and designation of a new meeting place for the people's representatives. Gordon House was designed and built for meetings of the Municipal Council. So the fact is that Gordon House was always a temporary house of parliament. Aside from the issue of insufficient space, lack of adequate parking and facilities to interact and engage with the public, the building itself lacks the stature 
and functionality of a modern parliament. So for decades, various governments have pondered and pursued plans for a new parliament building. Time and again, the consensus was clear. The legislative arm of government should be situated in the place where the nation's heroes are honored, a place where history has left its mark. Heroes Circle, as Jamaicans now know it to be, was once the Kingston Racecourse, the island's premier location for horse racing. The racecourse grounds also hosted cricket, cycling, traveling circuses, and many other entertainment-based events. Around since 1783, the property, previously named Montgomery Penn, was purchased in 1818 by the Kingston Council. It was on these grounds that former slaves celebrated full freedom in 1838 and decades later, Queen Victoria's Golden and Diamond Jubilees. The Jamaica National Exhibition of 1891 was also held on these grounds, at the site of what is now the Wilmers School. Renamed the George VI Memorial Park in 1953, a war memorial was also erected to honor those who served in the First and Second World Wars. Then, in 1956, as the island was making the transition from British rule to full self-governance, the local authority passed the King George VI Memorial Park Act. This law was designed to wind up operations at the Kingston Racecourse, which would later, in 1973, be renamed in honor of those who played a heroic role in shaping our great nation. This act primarily designated the Kingston Racecourse as an area of recreation, public gardens, entertainment, and so forth. It also designated that the minister had the authority to designate certain areas as the location for the new parliamentary building. And I share that vision, that we should make Hero Circle the center, the government circle. We are announcing today the start of what we call government circle. Making good on that announcement, a non-binding agreement was signed with China Construction America for the conceptualization and design of a model. The idea is to use this project as the catalyst for the regeneration revitalization of this great asset that we have, downtown Kingston. Have you ever been in possession of a birth certificate? Are you making over $37,000 monthly? If your answer to these two questions is no, then you may be eligible for the Project Birthright Initiative. This Jamaica 60 project will come on stream in July and will allow Jamaicans who have never had a birth certificate to get one free of cost. Come July, you will be able to fill out a registration form at all Registrar General Department, RGD offices island-wide, their website or social media pages. Persons may also visit the National Identification System NIDS fax website and social media page to access the registration form or for more information about the project. Get your birth certificate. Gain access to all government services. Be a part of the digital society. Claim your birthright. <laughs> That's all the time we have left here on this station, but be sure to join us tomorrow around about the same time when we'll bring you another information-packed program that's sure to edify. We're available at your convenience online. There's our website, our YouTube channel, and our pages on all the major social media platforms. You may also want to download the JIS app that's chock full of news you can use in this our 60th year of independence. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.